All right guys, what is up? Today we are putting in a brand new transmission into the Z and I am super excited for it. Um, so you can see here are my two transmissions. This is the one that I took out and this is the one that I'm putting in. If you have a question about like how to take it out and everything, go back and watch. I think I have a video on how to remove your clutch or how to replace your clutch. It's the same thing. Um, it'll show you how to remove all your exhaust and everything um, in order to get your transmission out. And then whenever I take my transmission out, I do have to take off the shifter because um, it just kind of gets in the way. But that's not a terribly hard thing to do. Um, but other than that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the history of the Z31 transmissions real quick. Um, if you want to skip forward, you can if you already know this. But the, b the basics is that there were three transmissions that came in the Z. The All of, all of the NA models had what was called the 71Z, which is this transmission right here. Now the 71C used to be known as the second strongest of the three. Um, it came in the S13s and people have made you know about 300 horsepower on them fairly reliably. Um, and I'm kind of pushing around there, uh, but this transmission was already having a hard life and uh, so it is really not happy with the power that we're making now. It makes some pretty bad noises while I'm driving. Um, and nowadays it's actually known as kind of the weakest transmission. Um, so. If you guys remember when I got this transmission, I actually said this was the second strongest. Um, that is no longer the case. People have actually kind of tested out the T5, which is the next strongest transmission, and that came in the 1984 through 1986 turbo models. And the T5, it does have some faults, some flaws, I guess, and I think it is the shift forks. Um, so if you slam through gears, you can actually end up breaking a shift fork. But if you kind of baby it between gears, um, it should hold a decent amount of horsepower. Whether or not um, it could handle what I was doing, I'm not 100% sure, which is why I wanted to go with the strongest transmission of them, a 30A. Um, but the T5 is kind of known to be a good option nowadays. So 71C kind of has a limit around 300 horsepower. The, the T5, I would don't actually know 100% sure what its max power is, but I want to say if you're around 400, that it's probably a good transmission to still use. Just be careful of those shift forks, and then you might actually be able to buy um, an upgraded kit for that. Because the T5 actually isn't a Nissan transmission, it came in um, like Mustangs of the era as well. Um, it's made by Borg Werner, so it is kind of a fairly common transmission. Um, the bell housings are different obviously, but the gearbox itself is the same. So you actually can find a lot of uh, upgrade parts for that. Now, the big king daddy of all of the transmissions is the Nissan 30A, and this is a variation of it. So the 30A came in the 1987 through 1989 turbos um, of the Z31, and that actually had a different tail housing. Um, so it was very similar to this, in that it just was one big piece all the way back to the shifter. Um, and it extended much further back than this one was here. Now the Z3138 bolts up, the shifter is in the right position, and uh, you can just buy a drive shaft that fits for one of those uh, models, and uh, it just works. It's super duper easy, and uh, that is what everybody wishes they could get, but not all of us can find a Z3138 in our area, and uh, I have never seen one in my area, um, despite looking for quite a while now. Um, so the alternative to that is the Z32 30A. It uses the same transmission, um, and I forgot to mention, but they can hold well over 500 horsepower reliably. Um, and the Z32 has a couple big differences from the Z31 that makes it not a bolt up. Um, so if you can see on these transmissions here, this little pocket is where the starter goes, and the starter comes in this way and it engages the flywheel from the engine side. On the Z32, it's kind of got like a window in the bell housing right here, and it's got a different type of starter that engages from the transmission side. So, you either have to get a different flywheel, and I already have a Fadon's aluminum flywheel, so I didn't want to lose that, and I didn't want to have to buy another $500 aluminum flywheel. You can get aluminum flywheels that work, um, but it's different than a Z32 flywheel. The Z32 is a 8-bolt, and Z31 is a 6-bolt, so you have to get a 6-bolt Maxima flywheel. I don't remember what year it is. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. Um, but it is fairly expensive to get one, um, and they really aren't in stock all that much because people aren't boosting uh, Maximas all that much. Um, but regardless, you need a new starter, you need a new flywheel, and then also the shifter bracket on the end 
The Z32 does end shorter like this one, um, but it has a kind of bracket back here that pushes the shifter back. But you can't use the stock Z32 bracket because it is too long, and you need to actually move it forward about two inches. So you can get a bracket from Excessive Engineering. Um, I think it's not Polar Engineering. There's another company um, that also makes a shortened bracket. Um, and they're around $150 to $250 depending on what brand you go with. And um, it's, just, it's a little bit of extra money. So you got to get a new flywheel starter and then also a shifter. And then also a custom drive shaft if you go with anything other than a Z31. And um, it's just a lot of money. I actually looked at getting a Z32 30A for mine. And it was almost $700 for the transmission. Plus $500 for the flywheel, plus $100 for the starter, plus $150 for the bracket. And the costs added up really, really quick. And I just was not extremely happy with that. So the alternative to getting a Z3230A is to get what is called, I'm going to call it just the Pathfinder 30A. It actually came in the Nissan Frontier, the Nissan Xterra, um, the Nissan Hardbody, and then the Pathfinder. I'll put the years on the screen for you right now of when they came. Um, because it is a very wide range, um, but you do want to look for the two-wheel drive models. You cannot use the four-wheel drive. It has a different tail housing that adapts to a transfer case, and you just can't use that. So this right here is a 19, I think it's a 92 Pathfinder transmission, and uh, this was obviously two-wheel drive. It doesn't have the transfer case on the back, and I pulled this at the junkyard for $180, which in my opinion is a really, really good price compared to almost $700. Um, but the one difference between Z31, Z32, 30A, and then all these other 30As is the gearing. These are truck uh, truck transmissions, which means that they are a lot shorter gearing than the Z31 and Z32. So I'm not 100% sure how much shorter it is, but I'm going to put it in the Z, and I'm going to take you guys with me for the drive so we can see together if this is a worthwhile mod is it worth saving almost $500 to get a shortened gear version of this um, so we're gonna go ahead and figure that out now the something people also do let me tell you real quick is take a Z32 transmission and then slap a Pathfinder bell housing onto it in order to retain the starter and flywheel which is a possibility but then you also need two transmissions um, and that is kind of a thing now, if you get a Pathfinder like I did, you're also going to need to build a custom shifter because the shifter needs to be pushed back about four inches. You can see this transmission and that transmission. They're roughly lined up on the front, but the tail housing there ends about the front of the shifter right here. So you do have to push it back about four inches, and that is what I built all this custom stuff for. So I'll go ahead and I have some video from earlier. I'll show you about kind of how I built mine, how it all fits in the transmission, and how that leads to pushing it back about four inches, um, and how we're gonna do it reliably so that the shifter feels good and is reliable over the next however many miles that I put on this, because I don't wanna be taking this transmission out to work on that shifter. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that now. Alright guys, so here is my inner shift linkage that I made. This is probably one of the most custom parts um, on the whole transmission. And that is because this is a 16mm uh, rod. This actually came out of my 71C transmission. Um, so the uh, like linkage kind of bolts, the wrist pin goes through here. And then the little thing sits in here to move this forward back and everything with the shifter. Um, and then it goes this way into the transmission. Um, but I went ahead and pulled it out and then cut it and then welded it on. Do you see I have a U-joint right here? This is a three-quarter inch uh, steering U-joint that I got on Amazon. Um, the reason that I went with this, I looked at a couple others, is that I needed something that was more compact to fit between the shifter plate and then like the uh, dust shield thing on the transmission. Um, so I needed something like this. You could get one that's smaller. I just got this one. It's the one that I found. It was prime shipping, so it was here quickly. Um, and But you can see I chopped it up a whole bunch. So normally it's got like a big extension out here and then a big extension out here. This side pretty much completely chopped off and then welded to this rod. And then this side over here, um, you can see I have this special little bracket on it. Um, so this one actually took, um, believe it or not, much longer than anything else here to make. And the reason for that is this bracket needs to be pretty much solid. Um, so if you look at like the excessive engineering short shifter bracket for, or like uh, shifter, shifter relocation bracket for the uh, Z32 transmission, um, they have this that's made out of a piece of billet, um, billet aluminum, 
and basically it means that it's just one big chunk that cannot move. And that is really important because when you're pushing the gear selector side to side to go from like say a position you would go into first versus the position you would go into fifth. Um, if this flexes at all then you lose rotation on this shaft. So instead of rotating to go into the gear um, this will just kind of like flop and it just causes way too much uh, slop in the shifter. So you really really need to make sure that this is a nice tight bracket. And then it's also engineered I don't know if I can do it with one hand, to rotate in a single direction. Um, so you still want it to rotate up and down in order to adjust for where the shifter moves because the shifter is moving in an arc and you're trying to turn that into linear motion and it just does not work if it's 100% solid. So it has to be able to move up and down like this in order to work correctly. And you can see I've got some like shims and spacers in there. Now the way this is set up is that this nut is not super clamped down onto it, um, so it's going to allow enough rotation. But then over here, this bolt is specifically made just for keeping the bracket solid. So I'll see if I can zoom in for you guys. Um, so you can see I've got the bolt head and then a nut. That sandwich is right here. And then a bunch and then a nut sandwiching this plate over here. And that means that I can keep these two at a very certain distance. Like I can move this and it won't affect the tautness between these two plates. Um, so if it was just a nut on this end and a bolt on this end, it would sandwich the two, it would make them kind of bend, and we don't want that. We want it to be rigid and firm, but at a distance that we can still move on these pivot points up here and right here. Um, so this one is a very... It, it looks pretty janky, but it works really well. I did put Loctite in all this stuff here, um, even this guy right here, even, even though it's a lock nut. Um, I still put Loctite in it because we don't want any of this coming off. We want it all to just remain where it is. So I think this is going to be a really good way of doing it. It looks it looks really weird, um, and I would love a like billet kind of bracket, kind of like the excessive engineering one, um, but I just don't know if we have the room to do it um, with the shift ball I'll show you. See if you guys can get a good view. I had to shave a good chunk of the bottom of this ball out here in order to make it fit because it just wasn't close enough. So like this is the distance that I have to move. Um, realistically, when you're in fourth gear, it's going to be like this. You know, it's going to be up. So that room right there is how much room we have to put the whole assembly on the outside of the transmission. Um, so it really had to be as small as possible, and a billet bracket just really wouldn't work. And then also, this is what I was talking about earlier, the distance from this plate to this dust boot is also a very important factor. You can't have anything that is too tall, um, or else you're just going to have some issues, and I did run into a lot of those issues before um, that I had to correct. So, that is kind of the whole idea behind the shifter and that linkage. Uh, it is... It's kind of uh, janky, but I think it's going to work, and I think it's actually going to be reliable long term. I will go ahead and you know take multiple interval checks on it just to make sure no bolts are coming loose or anything. But I have put a lot of thought into this, and I think even though it looks pretty sketchy, um, this will be a fairly reliable solution. Um, so let me go ahead and show you inside here now just how everything bolts up. Alright guys, so this is the inside of the shifter housing. Um, this is a custom piece again right here. So this front half, and then it goes down and it's actually like a little hoop right here. Um, if you can see that. Uh, this is the Pathfinder piece. So the Pathfinder is just like the 71C in which it uses a plate that goes on and then kind of like a little probe that goes in and it sits into that hoop and the hoop is what pushes it side to side and forward and back. Um, if you know what I'm talking about with the 71C, you understand. Um, and the thing is, I wanted to save most of this assembly because you can see there's a neutral safety switch here. Uh, so if I ever wanted to put in this as my neutral, then it would be able to work. So I'd know if I'm in gear or not. And then down here is the return pins that keeps the gear selector going back to the center. Um, so if I ever, you know, push it to the side like I was going to go into first and then I let go, um, it drops it back into the center. And then it also helps shifting from like second to third and stuff. Uh, so I wanted to retain pretty much all of this, but I had to adapt to come out the back here. So on the Pathfinder, there's this freeze plug in the back, and it turns out that this is a 30 millimeter diameter hole. So what I did is I popped that out and measured it, and then uh, I found 
a solution to fit this. This is a bearing in here. It's actually a little bit difficult to tell. I have them over here. I got these on Amazon. They're bicycle bearings. This is a 30 mil outside diameter to an 18 mil inside diameter. And then these are a bag of spacers. I'll tell you about that in just a second. So when I originally got these, I said, I'm going to go ahead and just extend the shaft all the way through this piece right here. Um, so I wasn't going to weld this on at all. And then I was just going to take the shaft out of my 71C, which this is here, and then uh, just have it go straight through. I'll may maybe like weld the shafts together or something. Um, but I wanted this just to be one big continuous piece and keep that guy. Uh, but the issue was that this shaft from the 71C is actually a 16 mil shaft um, as opposed to this 18 mil shaft. So I had to adapt it. So I went ahead and just chopped off this portion. It's the same thing as this, but this guy right here on the 71C, it's actually flipped 180. Um, and then the front shaft here is all my 71C stuff. Um, so I welded that all together so it's linear and everything. And then I had to adapt from this bearing, which was 18, to the uh, shaft, which is now 16. Um, otherwise, there would have been too much space. So that's what those shims were for that I had over on the bench. Uh, those guys would adapt it from here to here. And then I just kind of uh, lightly sanded down the 16 mil rod just to make it super smooth as it goes through here. And uh, I'm really happy with the result. Uh, I don't have any of these wrist pins in, so it doesn't kind of like look normal but as this spins like this uh, the bearing itself is actually spinning it's kind of hard to tell for you guys but the bearing is spinning and then moving in and out there's not very much resistance between the uh, shim itself and the shaft um, hence why I sanded it down so that it would be just a little bit of resistance because I want it to be as like fluid tight as possible I don't want much transmission fluid wanting to come out of this but it is very tight so it should seal fairly well um, while not wanting to push the bearing in or out. I did just take some of this high temp silicone, put it on the inside of that uh, circle, the 30 mil, and then press the bearing into it. And then I put some more silicone on top here to seal it off. Um, so the bearing should be pretty set in place by all that silicone and it shouldn't ever want to pop out. I, you know, I've shifted this a bunch and it never looks like it wants to. And again, that is because this is all nice and concentric. There is no you know, want to push on either the top or the bottom. It just wants to slide through it. So it's really, really nice. Um, so I'm super happy with all that. I'm gonna put these wrist pins in here um, and then put it all together, but that's the basic uh, setup that I have here and how I got it to come out the back. Um, I did need to push it because the original one was about right here and it needs to go about here. You know, about four inches back is what I measured from my 71C. I just measured the distance um, and it worked out really, really well. I'm honestly pretty happy with this and I think it's going to be reliable. So I'm going to go ahead, put all this together, uh, and then we should be able to go take both these transmissions out and look at them side by side. All right, so now that you guys have a good idea of how I made my specific shifter, um, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need for this swap. Um, so there's a few main things, obviously a new transmission, and then I'm also upgrading, if you can see in here, this is a 350C clutch fork in here. This is a uh, cast iron, I believe, or maybe just cast steel um, clutch fork, so it is solid compared to the stamped steel of the Z31 clutch fork. Um, and then I also need, you also need the spring, um, that goes on the pivot ball, the pivot ball itself, and then the spring that goes up here um, in order to make it all work. So make sure you order all those together. And then you need a Z31 or Z32 sleeve, and then a Z31 or Z32 bearing. You cannot use the 350Z, it doesn't work. Um, but there we go, so I got these sick upgrades. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna help the clutch feel a whole bunch. And then finally, we have a drive shaft. So, you guys remember how the shifter has to be pushed back, um, but not on the Z31? It's because the transmission is physically shorter, so we're going to need a longer drive shaft. Um, what I did here, this is my Z31 that I pulled out with the 71C, and then that is a brand new Shaftmasters aluminum drive shaft um, that I ordered custom. So I told them, hey, I've got a Z32 front end, and I've got a Z31 rear end, and the distance between the two, I believe it was 43 inches. I'll make sure to put the uh, correct number on the screen in case I was wrong. But it was 43 inches, I believe, from end to end. And uh, so I just gave them all those measurements and they made it up <laughs> and it looks really, really good, guys. You can see the uh, new one is just a little bit longer, about four inches, funny enough, uh, longer than this old one here. 
and uh, so this is going to be absolutely great. And that is pretty much all you need for the swap. You don't really need anything super crazy, just a drive shaft, a transmission, and then the correct shifter. So, I'm going to go ahead and put these in the car. You guys have probably seen my videos about me taking transmissions in and out um, quite a lot. So it is fairly straightforward. I will say the one thing is, this is the uh, transmission route that we have from our 71C. And it doesn't perfectly line up on um, a 1984 to 1986 Z like I have because they never came with the 30A so they don't have b bolt holes drilled for a 30A in the transmission tunnel but sp supposedly there is a very close set of holes that you just have to bend that bracket a little bit to make fit so I'm going to go ahead put this transmission in bolt up the uh, old transmission mount see how much we need to bend that bracket probably just get a sledgehammer hit it really hard get it into place um, and then I think we will be all good after that. So I'm gonna spare you guys all those details and I'll show you it once it's in the car. All right guys, as you can see, I did get the transmission and everything worked really, really well. Um, this is the position of the shifter right now. I'm not a huge fan of it. I wish it was leaning back a little bit more, um, but that would be changed by uh, just lengthening that shifter plate up on top and pushing this and that would make this move backwards as the linkage is moved. Um, but that's just something to think about. Go ahead and uh, just push it back a little bit and a little bit goes a long way because of the axes. Um, you know, one inch down there is like four inches up here. So um, this is how it is. It actually came out pretty good. So there's one thing that I'm not a huge fan of and that's the side to side. So to get into first, you kind of got to go all the way over here and then all the way over there to get to like fifth and reverse. So it's probably about six to seven inches worth of play. Not play, but like angle between side to side and it is pretty much everything that this shifter has so like all the way over here is as far as I can go down there and all the way over here is as far as I can go down there um, obviously with a little bit of extra room but you know what I mean um, so I'm not a huge fan because going from like second to third you have to kind of go like that and it's a lot of throw but it's not the worst thing in the world and if you saw like third is like there and fourth is right there so it's not a huge throw front to back. It's not terrible. I actually kind of like how it's about an inch and a half. Not really too terrible. Um, but overall, you know, it's not bad. I'm actually kind of a big fan of how effective like this is cost wise. Um, it is really everything was pretty cheap. I totaled it up. It's around $350. If your transmission's about $200, I spent about $150 on just like the shifter was 50 bucks and then plate steel or plate aluminum I had, but you know, you could say that that would be another $25, $30 if you ordered that on your own. Um, and then just all the little linkages and pieces. So it's not super duper expensive. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Unfortunately, this transmission, I told you guys I got it at you pull it. Or maybe I didn't tell you, but I got it at you pull it, and uh, it's not very happy. It's probably got close to 200,000 miles on it. Um, unfortunately, the dash that it, and the car that I took it out of was gone, so I couldn't tell you how many miles it has. But it's not very happy. Um, definitely either needs a rebuild or a different transmission. So I'm on the lookout again for a different one. If it happens to be a Pathfinder, I will definitely just swap all this over and call it a day. But I might also look for a Z32 just to make my life a little bit easier in terms of gearing. But speaking of gearing, I wanted to say it's really not that bad. I'll go ahead and try to make a video where I actually drive this around with you guys. Um, so you can see like the gearing and everything. I think it's actually pretty good. And I drive a Miata and Miatas are really short gearing. This is not as short as a Miata. Um, on, on my website, guys, if you want to check that out, I have a whole write-up for how to do this. I'll put the gear ratios between the Z32 and then the uh, the uh, 30A in the Pathfinder. So you guys can see, it's not a huge difference. Fifth gear in Pathfinder is, I want to say it's a 0.85. And then the fifth gear in a Z32, I want to say it's like a 0.77. So it's a difference, but it's not a huge difference, if you know what I mean. Um, but there you go, guys. This was kind of a long build and I didn't want to give like specifics on how to do it because I don't know if I recommend it. But I think it's a really, really cool mod, especially if you're on a tight budget and you want a strong transmission. This is definitely a big contender. If you guys want a good write-up, definitely check out thezgarage.net under the write-ups. And uh, I will try to get a video for you guys driving this around. So I will see you guys later.